this is what will make you invincible in 2024. So this is counsel for you before I begin to share the word tonight. Towards the end of the year, three major things happen. Number one. Thank you for tuning in to this channel. Please consider liking, commenting, and sharing this video. So this is counsel for you before I begin to share the word tonight. The number one is a season to show love. You need to show a lot of love in this season. And I tell you why. Many persons have been instrumental to your progress up until now. You may not have had the opportunity to show gratitude because you've been busy, you know, striving in the course of the year. Now that you are coming to the end of the year, it's time to reach out to loved ones, to friends, and even to your neighborhood and show love to the people, the love of God. It proves that you are grateful and you are conscious that people had impact on your life and it also proves that you are not an ingrate and you want to reciprocate. So as much as it's within your power, call somebody, say thank you to somebody, send a gift to someone. By all means, show gratitude. Don't end the year as if you don't care. Don't end the year as if nobody was instrumental to your progress. If there was somebody God used to bless you, reach out to them at this time and deliberately and consciously tell them you know what they've done and you are grateful. It will go a long way, not just to give them joy and fulfillment for what they've done, it will also enhance further partnership in the years to come. Because if you needed them before, you will need them again. And then the second thing you do in showing love is to read your heart of bitterness. As much as it's within your power, forgive anybody that has hurt you. That you came to the end of this cycle is enough to give God thanks. And whatever it is somebody may have done to you, it didn't kill you. It didn't end your life. And because God has given you the opportunity to start another cycle, you better rid yourself of all of those weights. The Bible said, set aside every weight and every sin that doth easily beset you. So if you are not careful, what sin would not have been able to do to you, a weight of bitterness, of malice, of unforgiveness may do it to you. Because as far as God is concerned, weights and sins measure the same. And so you may not be fornicating, you may not be stealing, you may not be lying, but that malice, that bitterness can cause more harm to you than outrightly walking in sin. The demons that can hurt you because you are walking in sin can also walk, hurt you because you are walking in unforgiveness. And so you don't want to start a new cycle with weights and burdens that are not necessary. So anybody that has hurt you, get rid of it. Aside the fact that it will heal you, it will also fast facilitate your relationship with God. Jesus was speaking, he said, if you are coming to an altar with an offering, and you remember that your brother has an ought against you. He said, leave that offering. Because what you are doing with God can become a ritual. A lifeless and powerless ritual. If you are holding somebody in your heart. He said, forget that offering. Go and make peace with that person. Then come back. So God is mindful of your offerings and your relationship. But if you don't have a good relationship with your brother and sister that you see, your relationship with God is hypocrisy. And so for your own mental health, and for your relationship with God, as much as it's within your power, rid yourself of weights. And trust me, this is a new cycle. You need to hear God for direction. You need to hear God for strategic operations next year. If anything affects your relationship with God, it may hinder, hamper, or affect, impede your possibilities for 2024. And you don't want any of that. So, walk in love in this season, as you will always do, so that your mental health is guaranteed and then your relationship with God is also fostered. The second thing you will commit yourself to doing is so winning. And this is a very strategic time. And I tell you why. Towards the end of the year, three major things happen. Number one is festivity. Because of the festivity of the time, many persons will discover that their fervency for God will begin to deplete and go down. And I'm saying that because our world today defines festivity and express festivity and celebration through lewdness, through immoral practices, through wardom and all kinds of iniquitous life. And so many persons are going to be exposed 
to all forms of sin and iniquity that will weaken them. And many other people who don't know God will plunge more into darkness. Because of that, it affords you a strategic opportunity to win more souls. Because it creates a harvest ground. People who were hid, who were not given to much activities as it were, will be drawn out because of the energy of the season. And because they are drawn out, every hunter must become very sharp in using his weapon. And so you must become very conscious about soul winning because many will be given to iniquity in this season. The love of many will wax cold in this season. And those who are already in sin will give themselves more to it in this season because festivity opens up that gate. Number two, the reason you have to be very deliberate about soul winning is because towards the end of the year, demonic activities are heightened. Demons are strategic. They know that when people are celebrating, their spiritual guard will be low. And they know that this period of time, people make a lot of decisions. And so if they are able to affect their decisions now, they will take over their year. And so they are active at this time. And because demons are active, we can't relax. We must also become very aggressive about soul winning. Both in the place of prayer, in the place of going out to win souls, and in the place of giving for evangelism. So if you are in a church or you are connected to people who are giving for soul winning or giving out to soul winning, make sure you pray with them. Make sure you give to them. Make sure you are part of it. And yourself must go out to win souls. Because this season, a lot of demonic activities are going on to win over people as against the next calendar and the next season. And in case you are in a territory where people are not actively involved in soul winning, you create it. Call your friends. Have an evening time out. Play worship songs. Pray together. Go to an environment. Win souls massively. Gather people. Mobilize it. Become the light in that territory. By all means, make sure on your account, people come into the kingdom, not leave the kingdom. Are you, to, are you following me? So it's a season that calls for soul winning at a very heightened and enormous rate. And finally, towards the end of the year, as we have come to like this, there are many, many operations from the realm of light. God is the one who created seasons. God is the one who created cycles. And so when we come to the end of the year, God is looking for men. Men to bless, men to recruit, men to empower. So that in his agenda and his program for the next cycle, they will be relevant. That one person you win to the kingdom may just be the next prophet God wants to work with in the next five years. That one person you win to the kingdom may just be the next entrepreneur that God wants to use to sponsor kingdom agenda. That one person you win into the kingdom may just be the next leader God wants to install into a leadership position to bring about his agenda. You never can tell because a lot of programs are going on in the spirit. So become that agent that God will use to recruit people into his army and to empower people for his kingdom. So soul winning at this time is a must. And then finally... Spend time with God. What we call retreat. As much as it's within your powers, make sure you shut down two days, three days, four days, and reflect in God's presence. Listen, you've been busy from January to December. You have few days to go. If what you want to achieve, you have not achieved till now, the remaining days won't kill you. As much as it's within your power, shut down. Sit with God. Ask him questions. Tell him to help your heart. Tell him to, to strengthen you. See, a lot happens when we wait upon the Lord. The Bible said they that wait upon the Lord, they renew their strength. They mount up with wings like the eagles. It said when they run, they shall not be weary. And when they walk, they shall not faint. We have a mountain to climb next year. And I'm saying this not as a prophet of doom, but we are coming to the last days. And so the more we, we approach the ends of the age, the more darkness will be upon the earth. So you need higher level fortification for the days that are to come. And where you draw that strength from is from the presence. He said they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion that appeared before the Lord. He said times of refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. This is why you must take time to stay with God. There are five major activities you must do as you retreat before the Lord. Number one, appraise your life. Check 2023. What are the things I did wrong? What are the mistakes I made? What are the things that I should have done that I didn't do? Take out time to go through it. Listen, don't assume you will not make the mistakes 
you made in 2023 and 2024. You will repeat them. The only reason you will not repeat them is when you think through them. Find out why you made those mistakes and avoid them. If you assume that, oh, if I just get into 2024, I won't make the mistakes I made in 2023, you'll be joking. History will always repeat itself. Somebody said, error happens when temptation and opportunities collide. Every time you see a man fall, it's because temptation and opportunity were given room for expression. And the only time you can abort that from happening is when you settle down. You know the things you did wrong. You know the temptations. You know the opportunities. And you begin to abort those programs. Otherwise, you will make the same mistakes. Some made financial mistakes. Some made relational mistakes. And they are still going into 2024 carelessly. Don't do that. Sit down. Appraise your life. Now, when you are done appraising your life and making the necessary adjustments, also be mindful to check the progresses you have made, the exploits you have made. Note them and thank God for it. When you thank God for the achievements of 2023, you are setting yourself up to achieve even much more in 2024. It's not enough to just say, Father, I thank you for 2023. Father, thank you for the many things you have done. That's not how it works. This is why I showed you this video a moment ago. We are mindful of the souls that we want. We are mindful of the things that we were able to procure by the power of the Holy Spirit. We are mindful of the miracles that God did in our midst. When you do that, you highlight them and you thank God for it. If you don't take time to retreat, these things won't come to your mind. You will just cross over to 2024 and because you went to a church and they decreed that this is your year, you will have speed, you will progress, you shouted. You may not have all of that except as you do the underground work that you too need to do. And the second thing to do is to find out the great things God did for you, in you, and through you, and thank him for it. The third thing you do in a retreat like this is to be sensitive until you download strategies. God is talking to people. God is showing men things. But the thing is that it's those that wait upon the Lord that he shows them things. He said in Jeremiah 33 verse 3, he said, ask of me, I will answer. And he said, I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. That means if you don't ask, he won't answer and he will not show you. But if you ask, he will show you. So if you go and wait upon the Lord and you ask him, what does 2024 hold for me? What will you have me do? What are the steps I must take? God will definitely give you blueprints for 2024. And that is what will make you invincible. See, make no mistakes about it. Everybody making impact is making impact deliberately. Nothing is by luck or chance. Everything is worked. And there is a protocol for working things in this kingdom. Stay with God until he reveals something to you about 2024. Stay with God until he gives you a specific instruction about 2024. Stay with God until he gives you a word about 2024. He will give us a word as a ministry. But the word he gives to you personally is what you can hold him to. Because if it doesn't come to pass, you can bring that word to him and say, Lord, you said this. Lord, you said this. And you will see that God will be faithful to the words that he has given to you. And then number four, when God reveals those patterns, those blueprints to you, ask him for grace to bet those things that he has shown you. It's one thing to see, it's another thing to bet. He said, as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. So God can show you, but you may not have the grace or the strength to travel. That's why we ask him for grace. And he say, ask of me. He is the one that invited us to ask. And if he invited us to ask, it means he's willing to give. So when you download the pattern number four, ask God for specific graces. And then in the areas where you see, you saw that you struggled in 2023, ask God for graces in those areas. There are some of you who made a lot of mistakes around decisions financially. Ask God for grace to be wise in dealing with your finances. There are some of you who made terrible mistakes in your relationships. You destroyed many fruitful relationships because of the mistakes you made. Ask God for grace in dealing with people. Tell God to open your eyes and to give you favor to meet people that are significant to your destiny. And the ones that he has brought you in contact with, ask him for the wisdom and the grace to manage it until it delivers on its purpose. Are you following you have to be deliberate about this. And then the areas where you sense God is taking you to. Ask God for grace to excel in those areas. Life is not a chance. Many people think impact 
Influence, productivity is a function of luck and chance. It is not a thousand times no. You must be deliberate in asking God so that he can empower you. And then finally, trust him for mind transformation. Most of us, our limitation is not sponsored by demons. It's sponsored by our minds. We are thinking too local. I was telling the women yesterday, we had the women one year anniversary and dinner, you know, yesterday. Such a glorious time. And I was telling them, I told them, everything God does is universal and global. There are few people that God gives them localized and territorial ordinations. But generically speaking, go and check your Bible. Everything God does has a transgenerational impact. It has a universal impact. It has a global impact. He said, not many days from now, you shall receive the Holy Ghost and power. He shall be witness, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and the uttermost part of the world. He said, go into all the worlds and disciple all nations. Every time God speaks, he's looking at the whole world. When he gave, even from the first man, he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion. He was addressing the whole world. So you've got to trust God for mind transformation. Some of us are so gifted, but our mind is our problem. We are too limited. We are too myopic. Cause God to open this. Let the boundary of your mind be enlarged. One of my mentors will say, the, the boundary, the extent of your vision is the boundary of your blessings. If you cannot imagine the world, you cannot possess authority to address the world. You cannot possess resources to sponsor an agenda that will affect the world. And so you've got to trust God for a mind shift. Are, are you following? This is why a retreat at this time is too important. And then you're asking me, how do I do this retreat? You can have a word retreat. Sit down and just study the word of God. Meditate on the word. You can have a prayer retreat. Just spend time praying. Praying. You can pray one hour every three hours. And you are just there before the Lord. And you run that for two days, for three days, for four days. You can have a worship retreat. You just saturate the whole environment with worship. You shut everything down, no distraction. And as the worship is playing, you are just there talking to the Lord and giving thanks. And your spirit is just connecting to heaven and God is downloading things. And you can have a fasting retreat where you lock yourself, stay away from food, and you are just opening your spirit before the Lord. And you can combine the four of them. Prayer, word, fasting, and worship. But by all means, make sure your spirit opens and God downloads something. This is what will make you invincible in 2024. And I pray for the grace to go through until you receive something from heaven. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Glory to God. Are you ready for 2024? Are you sure? Are you sure? I don't know about you, but me, this thing we have done in 2023 is child's play. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.